Okay, so this story showed up on my Google feed the other day and uh, I was flicking through because I've got a Despi Pro case and uh, I just thought it'd be interesting to have a read. I was skimming through it and uh, I came across uh, this bit here. I used Gunner's pre-built Pi Debian image and I thought, oh yeah, that sounds interesting. I don't think I've tried that yet. Uh, so I went into it and uh, you can see download uh, tested Debian images and uh, I downloaded the one for the Pi 4 and I downloaded this one, the XZ compressed image and it's on my desktop. There you go, there it is. So if I open up Imager, I haven't plugged in a drive yet, so I'm going to install it onto an SSD drive, uh, my Kingston SSD drive. Uh, it was one of the ones I had Windows 10 on, but it, it was a failed install and so it was a bit slow. I've got Windows 10 on my Crucial drive now. So choose OS and uh, if we go down to custom and go to, well I put it on the desktop, so we go to desktop and this is the one, Raspberry Pi 4 image, hit open, choose SD card. Uh, so I know this is uh, in my Dynamo. I'm basically running the operating system from an SSD. This is Twister OS on this 120 gig SSD, and I'm going to be installing to this one this Dynamo, uh, which is a Kingston 240 gig SSD. So click on that and hit right, and you'll find that it takes no time at all. It is a very small image, and the reason for that is there's no desktop environment. Uh, but that's not a problem because we can install a desktop environment into it. There you go, you can see the verifying is going super fast. And that's all done. So hit continue. So what I would need to do now is to shut down, so basically I've got two SSD drives plugged into my Pi 4. Twister OS is running from one of the SSD drives and the other drive plugged in uh, is this one here. And you can see now it says Raspberry Root and Raspberry Firm. Uh, so if I shut down and then I'll unplug the Twister OS SSD and then I'll reboot from the Kingston one which has got Debian on it. Okay, so you can see it's starting up fine. Okay, so this is how it starts up. There is no desktop environment. Uh, so if I hit enter and then we get a login. Uh, now if I type in root and press enter, that will log me in. So if I do sudo apt update, oh, I don't need sudo because I'm logged in as root, so apt update, and we'll press the up arrow and we'll change that to upgrade, and yes. Okay, so that's all done, so let's install NeoFetch. Okay, that's done, so let's type in NeoFetch just to launch that, and that will show us what we've got. OS Debian 10 Buster Arch64 Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, been running for 5 minutes, 1.5 gigahertz, and it shows the RAM and everything. Okay, so let's put a desktop environment into this. So if I type in task cell, It launches this, and uh, let's do something that uh, is lightweight, so something like XFCE. So if I press space, and then press return, it will start installing on its own. And we'll come back when that's all done. Okay, so here we've got to pick the keyboard. I'm happy with English US, so let's click on that. Okay, so when it does this bit, it looks like it's going a bit wrong, but uh, it is still carrying on. Uh, you just need to let it go all the way to the end on the right-hand side there and you'll get a little prompt when it's all finished right at the bottom. Okay, so that's all installed now. Let's hit reboot. And here we go. Because we haven't created a password or changed anything, it's still root and just enter to log in. Okay, so we need to sort out this massive border around the screen, and that's to do with the overscan. So uh, I did a bit of digging to find out where the config.txt is, and it's in boot and firmware and config.txt, the same place as it is in Ubuntu, I think, but not the same place as Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, so obviously you can see here boot and firmware. I copied that into a text document and added the necessary bit. So let's pop that into terminal. 
And let's see this search for, oh, we've got terminal on the bottom anyway, look. So let's paste that in and hit return. So here's the config.txt and the bit I need to add is this, disable overscan. I could overclock at this point, but I won't, I'll leave it, leave it as is. Doesn't really matter where it goes. Uh, so if I, let's pop it there. And then uh, control O, enter, control X. And let's reboot and see if we can apply that. That's better, so let's log back in. Okay, so it looks pretty nice. Uh, I do like this. Uh, so we've got a show desktop option. We've got terminal, we've got folders, we've got the browser, uh, we've got that search, and what's this, folders. Oh, that's like a quick shortcut to folders. But if I press this one, it will hide the, everything that's open. Press it again, it'll bring it all back. So that's pretty nice. I do like this universal search. I was trying to find something like this for Raspberry Pi OS recently. Uh, and it looks like this is the same sort of thing. So if I type in text, you can see on the right hand side, it's got a couple of things. And even LibreOffice Writer doesn't contain text, but it has text in the title, which is quite nice. So uh, terminal, well, there you go, there's several terminal emulators there and files. You can see that it does various things there. File manager, bulk rename, and edit tags in your audio files. So let's close that down and let's go through the applications bit just to see what it comes up with. So run program, terminal, file manager, mail, web browser, settings. Uh, so we've probably got a way of changing the appearance here. Yeah. So we can have a look at changing various different fonts and things. I quite like the dark one. High contrast. Let's stick with the dark one because I think that looks pretty decent. Uh, so the icons, there's only a few in here. Uh, and I think probably I've got the, the one that looks the best. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to stick with that Tango. And then fonts, well I won't mess with that, but obviously you know what that does. So let's close that down. And let's go back through applications. So settings, accessibility, appearance, desktop, display. So let's go back into file system. File system looks pretty pretty neat, pretty easy to understand. And everything feels nice and snappy, which is good. Uh, so settings, accessories. So we've got various things in here, like notes, mouse pad, task manager. Oh yeah. File manager, education, LibreOffice math, uh, LibreOffice draw, Rosetta image viewer, Xsane, I don't know what that is. Really dangerous. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll have to look at that separately. Uh, Graphics, internet, so Firefox is the browser as standard. A CD burning piece of software. Media player, LibreOffice, system. Oh, Synaptic Package Manager. So that's uh, the installations. Uh, well, let's see if I type in Imager, because Imager would be something I'd always try and put on uh, something like this. So let's click and let's go down and see image reader. Yeah, it doesn't look like Raspberry Pi imager is there. Let's try something normal like Gparted. part is there, mark for installation, hit mark, apply, and apply. You can use this to uninstall as well. I've used this um, Synaptic package, ma package Manager before. I did a separate video on it. So all applied changes automatically close. Right, so let's have a look and see if Gpart shows up now. So, yeah. So let's click on that and launch and it looks like it's using the whole of my SSD drive so that's good so I don't have to do anything to that so we've got our multiple desktops here that we can switch through if we've got things open on that uh, let's just try the web browser I think 
I tried this before and it, it wasn't that fast, but I think it's probably just not been optimized in any way. So I didn't think YouTube was as good as it should be. Okay, so it starts off at low res, so let's just pop it on 720 so it looks a bit better and see how it copes with that. Again, I haven't changed anything with the browser, I haven't done anything to it. Yeah, it's a bit jerky, so it needs a bit of work on that. I think I'll probably end up putting Chromium on it and give that a try. Um, but it was just a little experiment. I'd read about it and uh, I thought I'd give it a try. But then finding it didn't have a, a desktop interface, I figured I'd better install one on there. Obviously, you can go into TaskCell and you can install different desktop interfaces. I've done it where I've installed loads of them before. I tried Cinnamon, but it came up really slow and it came up with some warning about the graphics as well. Uh, Mate didn't work. Uh, I haven't tried many of the others, but I have tried them in the past. I think we're going to have to change the background because the background looks a bit dull. Uh, so let's find, I did have a uh, big, so I've used this one a few times. Uh, I think, yeah, I think this one has it. Someone recreated it. So let's click on that and save image as, save it in i save it in pictures, I guess. Oh, look, so we can, so we can click on this uh, and set as wallpaper. Okay, so I think that looks a lot better. Uh, anyway, it's just uh, to show one more thing that you can run on the Pi. Uh, there's obviously loads of options with this version of Debian uh, where you can install various different uh, desktop environments. But uh, I think this one looks pretty good, and I like the way it works with the dock and everything else. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.